After the bill to support Ukraine passed, there were quite a lot of wailing from Russian side about this bill, and one of the bizarre reactions was that United States at least revealed that they are true Nazis, just like Ukrainians, because they passed this bill on the day when Adolf Hitler was born, on the birthday of Adolf Hitler. So now we know why there were all these delays in Congress. Uh, they were just waiting for several months for birthday of Adolf Hitler, just to reveal to the whole world that they are true Nazis, just like Ukrainians. So you you understand what the level of uh, of thought, level of propaganda is going on there. But today we will talk not about this uh, and other bizarre wailings from Russians. We will talk about this figure, 61 billion, that is floated everywhere in all media outlets. They are saying about 61 billion in aid, in military aid, some, some people say, to Ukraine. And uh, this is absolutely made up, inflated number. And we understand why politicians, uh, you know, use this number. They would like to show that as if they did quite a lot for Ukraine. But this number is completely false. And we will, um, and we will, uh, and I will show you today why it is false. Because such inflated figures are thrown around by pundits, politicians, media. Um, United States American public has quite a distorted view of the figures, and uh, because they think that uh, Ukraine received much more than it uh, really received, they think that quite a lot of money were expended already without, you know, uh, and inside. So the um, Russia is not defeated yet, and there is no victory inside, and uh, for them they are more reluctant to for further aid. Uh, for Ukraine, because they think that, you know, it is a bottomless pit uh, United States is uh, throwing money into. And it is not uh, true. The thing is that they were, um, they were deceived, they were misled by the politicians who are inflating these numbers just to pat themselves uh, on the back. I mean, we will look at these numbers uh, further, but a couple of more things I would like to say. This growing resistance to further aid for Ukraine is reflected in the votes that were for this bill, because more than half of uh, Republicans voted against it. Less than half of uh, Republicans supported this bill, and all the Democrats uh, supported, but they have, uh, I mean, they were supporting their president, and they have so-called party discipline, uh, as it was in communist times uh, said um, in uh, Soviet Union. So they were voting unanimously for this bill. Everybody who was from Democrat present voted for, for it. Also, this made up overinflated uh, numbers allow somebody like Donald Trump to say things like, we, United States, have given to Ukraine $100 billion more than Europe. And it was said at the time that the uh, aid that went, that actually went to Ukraine was from the United States, was less than $100 billion. So it was absolutely untrue. It was, again, the exaggeration or hyperbole from the Trump part or, well, well, outright lie from his part, just to, I mean, that's, that's the thing that, that he does. So, how politicians, media, and everybody else can uh, get away with, you know, over-inflating these numbers? Because nobody reads the bill, because it is very, it is done in very tedious, in very dull uh, language, you know, uh, you know, law lawyers speak and uh, whatever it is you can call it, and it is almost 50 pages in length, so nobody has the will, the time, and the, the I mean, capacity to read it, and uh, to, and they are relying on the um, others to say them what is in this bill. And these others are failing them, they are saying them lies. 
So to spare you the tedium of, uh, you know, looking into the bill itself, there is a non-profit organization, Protect Ukraine Now. They compiled this uh, Google document. With the, They looked through the bill. They took out all the expenditures that are um, con- contained in this bill. And they compiled this Google Docs document that you can see, you know, in very easily digestible form uh, what is really going on there. Because you can see that Ukraine, under this bill, that the money that goes directly into, you know, spend it in Ukraine or for Ukraine, these are $28.9 billion, not 61. And out of these $28.9 billion, you know, there there are three categories. The economic support, short-term military aid, and long-term military aid. And uh, I think that long-term military aid should be excluded from all these calculations because it will be in the future. It will not be in 2024. Right now, this year, we will receive short-term military aid and economic support fund. So if you just uh, add up these two numbers, you will arrive to a figure around $16 billion not 60. So we should speak about $16 billion that will go to Ukraine. And it is not like $16 billion. It's up to $16 million, billion. Meaning that <clears throat> Biden administration can spend less. This is the cap. This is the, you know, uh, yeah, the, the, the upper limit of the expenditure. Not uh, that they are uh, obliged to, they must spend this amount. No, they can spend less. This is the cap. So, what is this short-term, uh, short-term uh, military aid? It is this so-called uh, presidential drawdown authority that um, the president, if there is such a need, can draw from current stocks of United States military uh, equipment and give it to, for example, to Ukraine or to Taiwan or to Israel, to anybody. And it will, it, it can, uh, you know, do it from any stock, from any country uh, where this there is a in American base or American wi- warehouse or they are, or maybe um, some other militaries are, um, uh, you know, warehousing these uh, supplies, American supplies for America, for United States. So they can take it from Europe, from uh, Japan, from Germany, from whatever, or, or from Israel, for, for that matter, and uh, or from uh, United States itself, from stocks in the United States, and move it to Ukraine. So it is immediate, short-term military aid, and from this military aid, one billion was already allocated and uh, now is being shipped to Ukraine. And then there is economic support fund and uh, other assistance for Ukraine. You know, this war that Ukraine is fighting is very huge. It is so huge that the um, United States and all our other Western allies, two years after the beginning of this full-fledged, uh, full-scale invas- invasion, they cannot support us with enough artillery shells. All the industrial might of the West cannot support one single Ukraine fighting Russia with artillery shells. We keep about uh, one million people in uniform to fight this war. It is a huge burden on our economy. And and we are expanding uh, uh, about 37, I think, percent of our budget for military, for, for this war. So it, uh, there is a big gap in our other uh, expenditures. We have uh, we are running huge deficit, you know, in order to 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 uh, to wage this war, and we have uh, no alternative because the alternative is total destruction of Ukraine and Ukrainian people. So we have no other choice, and in this case, European Union and United States are you know, uh, supporting us, and uh, they are giving us some funds to cover this deficit uh, with other areas, because this money, 
this financial aid is not going to fund um, Ukrainian military. It's not the, the spend to you know to pay for to pay for uh, wages of military to close them to you know it is not that it is only for other um, non-military expenditures of our government and as far as I understand it is also not to pay our retirees because it's uh, the the pensions of our elderly people is quite um, sizable. Um, chunk of our budget. So this money is also not uh, paid, not um, used to pay for pensioners. And uh, then we have long-term military aid, and this is, uh, you know, the contracts that the uh, United States government is, um, uh, you know, is um, concluding with. United States uh, uh, manufacturers to produce some equipment or some artillery shells or what, any other uh, ammunition uh, war related things in future and it will not be available in uh, I mean the the results of these contracts will not be available in uh, this year it will be available maybe in two three four five years not now so I think we have we have to exclude this um, 13 billion dollars almost 14 billion dollars from this 20 almost 29 billion. We should uh, we should speak only about this 8.2 and 6.9 billion dollars that are immediate and they will be in nearest future spent in Ukraine. All in all it is around 16 billion dollars that's the figure we have to speak about and what else we have in this bill we have a procurement for u.s military because i mean they expanded something they have to buy it new so 21 billion uh, almost 21.5 billion dollars goes to um, replenish the stock of u.s military and it is almost as much as the whole aid to Ukraine. I mean, <clears throat> for example, you have a fire. I will give you some uh, old bucket and then bought myself a fire truck and then combine the price of old bucket and fire truck and said that, okay, I spent that much for Ukraine, for you, for, for your, uh, I mean, you understand what uh, what I'm saying here. And there are, for example, Department of Defense military personnel expenditures is, is $6.5 billion, almost as much as a short-term military aid for Ukraine. And it is also included there. And uh, not, I mean, in this so-called uh, $61 billion. What is not included is this operation maintenance and uh, defense wide for U.S. military. It is not included. This twenty. Uh, 7.9 billion is not included in the figure of 61 billion. They, they are excluded. But other US program, human services, economics, and other programs, they are uh, included there. So we have actual eight out of 61 uh, billion. We have only 16 that are immediately goes to Ukraine. 13.7 will be available to Ukraine in some time in future and <clears throat> this 6.9 billion is is not enough it is enough for us to last to, till the end of the year but it is not enough to defeat uh, russia it is not enough it's just too puny it's it's too small amount so i mean there is a time to speak to start talks about next package and uh, most of all, to start uh, uh, speaking about the strategy, the view, the end point of this all. Because if Biden administration doesn't have a strategy how to end this war with defeat of Russia, because there is no other way it will end. It will be if there will be some kind of negotiation, some kind of peace talk, some kind of freezing of the front. It will be just a short respite 
before Russia attacks again. If they are not punished and punished severely right now uh, for the things they did, uh, they will not be, um, I mean, it will be encouragement for them uh, to do it again if they are not punished. And if they were able to keep the spoils of their uh, aggression, you are inviting them to aggress again. That's, I mean, it is quite simple. And anybody who is saying that there is a possible, there is a possibility to, um, there is a possibility to have uh, some kind of a negotiation and agreement and anything with Russia is lying to you. First, um, the, uh, the premise here is that it is Russia that wants peace and Ukraine that wants war. No, Ukraine would like to have peace, but we would like to have lasting peace because we have quite a lot of um, agreements peace agreements with Russia that Russia broke. And Russia broke every single agreement that uh, they uh, signed, not only with us. For, with Chechnya, for example. After the first uh, war in Chechnya, they uh, acknowledged the existence of, Ch of independent Ichkeria. And then after three years, when they decided that they can uh, now um destroy each area they just reneged on the on this agreement on the on uh, pretense um, on some manufactured uh, point, um pretenses so please stop speaking about uh, that ukraine have received too much aid it is not true stop speaking about 61 billion uh, in aid for Ukraine. It is not true. It is more like 16 billion in this uh, current age, uh, you know, latest aid, aid um, package. So, and please support us. We need your support. Slava Ukraini and uh, Russia the land best.